So I've gotten more and more interested in brain health over the last number of years because I don't think it really makes sense to think about psychology without thinking of the tissues of the brain. It just doesn't make any sense. I had a slide about 10 years ago saying the brain is wet. And that was an early phase of my figuring this out. While I was figuring this out, there were other people figuring out that there was brain inflammation. This wasn't on the roadmap when I started out. Um, and um, it's really progressed and progressed to the point where I am totally obsessed with this and I'm going away this week to be with some friends, an osteopath and her, her partner who's had concussions to spend a week looking at the tissue problems in brain injury, which honestly have an amazing amount of parallel with the things we're learning about the brain in autism. And I'm learning that the brain has certain ways that it can protect itself and certain ways that it can repair itself, but it doesn't do these things by itself. You need to, I mean it does, but most of us don't have the resources coming into our body to help the brain do it right. Um, so what I'm going to do is try and pass this on to you, and it's not only about biology, it's really about exactly what this talk title is, Reducing Brain Overload. Things we know about the brain in autism and in everyone that can help you include that the brain, and I'm going to explain each of these in, in subsequent slides. So the brain is sensitive. The brain is a mover. The brain has rhythms, rhythms at very, very rapid time scales, like micros, milliseconds, daily rhythms, seasonal rhythms. The brain is wet and alive. The brain cells drive what the brain does. The brain is brilliant, the brain is flexible, and the brain can repair itself sometimes and with help. Seven, help the brain dump its trash and catch up. Reduce brain noise. As I already said, healthy brain cells are sensitive to, more sensitive to signal when they, when, because they have less intrinsic noise. Six cells generate noise, and I'm about to get to that. Uh, sick, no, they, sick cells produce noise that gets in the way of signal, so you want to support brain health to increase signal and reduce noise. Now this is a technical slide. Please listen to me carefully. I'm going to explain the whole thing to you. The inflammation in the brain creates cellular noise that interferes with information processing. So that's the take home point. How do I get there? Look at this, this is a blood vessel. The red, red blood cells and the blue things are white blood cells. When there's inflammation in the bloodstream, the blood-brain barrier can be breached and inflama inflammatory factors as well as cells can get into the brain tissue. Here you have a picture of an astroglial cell, remember the glial cells, and a microglial cell and they're big and puffy. This one hasn't gotten puffy yet. And you see these arrows, which you probably can't read the type, but they're egging each other on to produce irritating, excitotoxic chemicals that are both toxic and irritating, ex excitatory. And here, tryptophan is driven to something called quinolinate, which is incredibly irritating in the brain. Here, so this is what it says here, excitatory chemicals are created by activated glial cells. This astroglial cell you see, and you had seen earlier in the tripartite synapse, the glial cells surrounding the synapse. These little yellow balls are glutamate, that's the excitatory transmitter, neurotransmitter that happens during signaling in neur between neurons, and normally after a synapse, the the astroglial cell has these little filaments in there and mops it up right away. But when the astroglial cell is tied up being inflamed or fighting off oxidative stress or infection, it doesn't mop up the glutamate. So the glutamate hangs that in there and just keeps irritating the neurons. And so the normal housekeeping fu functions of glial cells get neglected. 
you have a reduction of brain repair chemicals like BDMF, and you start damaging the oligodendroglial cells, which insulate the white matter with myelin. So this can cause irritation, noise, and over time damage to the brain. So this is a very important slide to understand. I want to tell you that this came from a paper on depression, but there's a huge overlap between what we know about cellular changes in depression and what happens in autism. So in summary, I actually propose as a scientist that autism is the breakdown of resilience, that it's a process that goes on on a moment-to-moment -moment basis where you can't do all the things that you could do if you were more resilient. You have a loss of flexibility in the repetitive and restricted behaviors. This seems logical to be not a specific trait, but just what the brain does when its resilience is diminished. Problems recognizing facial emotion or faces, it could come from a reduction in the brain's ability to coordinate all the information that the face provides, the eyes, the mouth, all of the amazing muscles that were a subtle shift will tell you that the person is thinking or feeling something. That's a lot of overwhelm for people with autism, and that the overwhelm part may be, at least in part, related to the loss of resilience at all of the levels of the brain, the cells, the molecules, and upwards. Problems communicating, problems in marshalling sufficiently complex resources, like the words you want in the right time, or the uh, ability to coordinate all the incredible movements in your mouth. I once saw a live, a video of a live MRI watching the way the tongue moved as someone was talking. That is complicated. And if you have problems coordinating movement, why would that be easy? So 10 tips to reduce bro brain overload. I'll read them quickly. Slow down. Remember that how is as important as what. Be gentle to the senses. Resonate, set a soothing, harmonious tone. Support resilience, reduce body burden. Help the brain dump its trash and catch up. Simplify routines and, and your stuff. Get so fascinated that time stops mattering and use your mental zoom lens to make space in your brain. I also want to mention that Anat Banyel's book, Kids Beyond Limits, is organized, and there's also her book, Move Into Life for Adults. But Kids Beyond Limits, is organized around her nine essentials, which include slow, variation, flexible goals, enthusiasm, imagination, a lot of the stuff I said, but I work it into a more brain physiology state. Her book and my book came out the same day, and we are working on research together. I found an amazing, there's an amazing ma mathematician studying autism who has done a statistical characterization of movement problems in neurological conditions, which perfectly Category, it explains what she does in her work. And this is, this is actually, uh, the, I think the numbers are not on there, but the 10 tips from my book, The Autism Revolution, that you can download for free from the homepage, autismrevolution.org. Going for the extraordinary, you can't control your genes, but you can control their expression, repair and support cell cycles, get gut and immune on your side, build better brain health, which I've talked here, calm brain chaos which is about reducing the noise. Join your child's world, that's about being fascinated. Love, rejoice, and make breakthroughs. Lead the revolution and do it for yourself, your next baby, your family, and the world. And a recipe for improvement, for, for chaos, is poor food, few nutrients, many allergens, lots of toxins and, toxins and infectious issues, lots of stress, pressure, too much, too fast, while Good bandwidth and rich organization, excellent food, high nutrient density, minim minimal allergens, minimal toxic and infectious burden, love, learning, respect, sensitive sensory input, and savor each movement. And that's my book again and some other the websites, Autism, Why and How for the Intellectuals and the Transcend Research Program. My new clinic will be called the Body Brain Resilience Center, www w.bradybrainresilience.com and you can sign up for announcements. It's scientifically plausible that you can organize treatments for your child to repair your child's brain.
And you'll hear more and more focused stuff about this from me and others going forward so we can win. You can win. Thank you.